안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. How are you? Um, that's Korean for good morning or how you doing or something like that. And I hope you're well. By the way, this is Monday the 17th and this is the last Monday I can say to you our conference starts the 21st, Friday of this week through the 23rd Fan the Flame Conference. Speakers, praise, worship, waiting, prayer, being prayed for. You can still get in. Go to the website and, and brooklyntabernacle.org and look for Fan the Flame Conference. Um, you meet Christians from around the country and around the world. People are coming from other countries. We're going to have a wonderful time with the Lord and with one another, encouraging each other. I want to be an encouragement. Am I an encouragement to you? I hope I am. That's the only reason I want to do this. Instruct or encourage somebody so that we keep on keeping on with the Lord. So now we're, we're talking about um, Samuel, young boy, has heard from the Lord. God has spoken to him as he serves in the tabernacle, surrounded by corruption and spiritual apathy. And the Lord said to Samuel, verse 11 of chapter 3, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything, the high priest, everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. In other words, judgment is coming. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli. The guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Wow. There's an Old Testament judgment. So Eli's sons, as the prophet had told Eli, they're going to die in the same day as a sign that God is behind it. Why? They profane God's house. Sacrilegious. And Eli did not restrain them. So what do we learn from this for us today? That God is a God of mercy and love, but also a God of judgment. And sometimes judgment comes in one shape or another in this lifetime, not just in eternity. That we know for sure. Happened in the New Testament. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? They, they lied to the Holy Spirit. They lied to the leadership of the church. And they both dropped dead the same day in the church and carted them out. Imagine the report of those meetings. Oh, we had a great service last week. Two dead. So God still, based on how he surveys, especially when you're involved in sacred things and you have a lot of light, God can exercise judgment, which is sometimes awe-inspiring. So now the, the, the God has come and spoken to Samuel. Notice God speaks about things before they happen. Why? Why not just let them happen? Well, a number of reasons, but one of the main ones is God wants to show through the prophetic message that comes before, it's going to be, it was revealed to Samuel, he's going to tell Eli, so that when it happens, the word will get out, God did this. God did this. Didn't happen by accident. This was an act of God because of these sins of Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons. They were treating the holy things of God sacrilegiously, and they were mistreating and abusing their power with the women right in Shiloh, where the tabernacle was. So the New Testament says our God is a consuming fire. How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? There are those warnings in Scripture. Am I correct? 
So just, we can't make this just an Old Testament thing. There are certain things that are just Old Testament things. Prohibitions against eating pork spare ribs, which we can have today. So, what else can we learn from this? That God takes it serious when you know something is evil going on and you can stop it, but you turn the other way. You let it go. That's what Eli is going to be judged for. And his whole posterity, all his future uh, descendants are never going to be in the priesthood anymore. God's cutting the whole family off. God can do that. No mas. Nada mas. Demasiado. Too much. Too much. I gave you. I warned you. I waited and I was patient. But you crossed the line. Now you know God warned and spoke through the conscience of Eli. The, the people are coming saying what your sons are doing. Well, I know they shouldn't do that, but they're weak. When they grew up, they had a bad first grade teacher, and I think it traumatized them. And now, no, stop. It's wrong. We live in a day now where everything is justified by I'm a victim of my circumstances. God doesn't look at it that way. When we're of age and, and God's given us warnings and we have light, God judges us according to the light we have. And they had a lot of light. That's what made their guilt so bad. You know that America is much more wicked than countries that we pray for uh, and pray about sending missionaries to because think of the sins of America with all the light we have. Well, if you go to Bangladesh, what, what, what amount of, through the centuries, what amount of light of the gospel do they have? Sin is still sin. Idolatry is idolatry. False religion is false religion. But don't you get what I'm saying? Light, the amount of light makes the guilt more extreme. That's why, we're, you know, that country is so wicked and they're doing this. They have no light. It's wrong, but they have no light. How about us? How about this country? So, as I was saying, the sin of letting it go and turning the eye. Because why? Family, race, ethnicity, our denomination, we look the other way. Oh, the sins of other people, of another race, another ethnicity, another church denomination. Look at what those people do. But if it's one of our own, come on now. Nobody's perfect. Well, God hates that. I said that before, but I know from Proverbs, God hates dishonest scales. Where... We judge not based on what happened and the light they had. We judge on, uh, it'll make us look bad. Let's not do that. Let's love everyone, pray for everybody, but let's also be careful now. If we have the ability to stop something that's evil going on, let's do our utmost before God to warn, to stop. If it's our children, grandchildren, whatever, don't. Do that. You can't beat God. He always has the fast, la, final and last word. Blessings on you. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.